You know, it's been a brutal year. Uh, we can look at all the year charts. Right. Going into next year, what's the conversation with clients? What changes that conversation in part so that perhaps there's a more constructive uh, future for some of these stocks? Well, I think looking ahead to next year, it's hard to feel like things are going to be much better. Uh, in fact, you know, the, the setup is a little bit more concerning in a couple of ways. One of which is, you know, if this economic reset continues, we actually see job losses, the ad markets kind of inflect weaker. Um, it's very kind of correlated. So, you know, if you think it's tough now, wait till what happens, you know, next year if the economy truly softens. I think that also is ahead when I think for subscriber growth, we're starting to see uh, signs of saturation in this market um, and the consumers, you know, um, spending on particularly in the second and third tier uh, streaming services, subscription services. There's a lot of questions around, you know, how strong will that really be? Um, and then the com competitive uh, situation. So. Uh, the companies that are big platforms that layer streaming on as kind of a bolt-on that don't necessarily need to make money from streaming. They can make Amazon it and ways. Apple being the two Amazon key ones. Amazon and Apple, yes. And, you know, are they going to get bigger in sports? Is that going to make them bigger competitors? Um, you know, is this really a business that can exist as anything other than a bolt-on, a throw-in for a bigger platform? Yeah. A um, lot of different things there, obviously. Yeah. Well, that question, can it exist? I mean, can it? We've asked it for years now, but investors have been asking it a lot more forcefully over the last year. Yeah. Is there really a, a return to be generated from this business that is a viable return and one that therefore should be rewarded in the marketplace? Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of reason to debate that. I mean, I, my, my belief is that it can be. You know, I, I believe that Disney, as troubled as they have been, their stock over the past month, as their leadership changes have been, they have a brand proposition. They have a way to leverage that in other ways. Um, and they have um, a resonance with the consumer that I think can work. You know, Netflix, I think, is scaled. It's really an expectation games for the stock relative, you know, to a question of other, whether they'll make it. They'll make it. Um, but, you know, the others, um, you know, there's real questions there. Mm -hmm. So the others... Yeah. I mean, does streaming become the new cable bundle? Do we start to see partnerships and mashups and consolidation in terms of some of the many, many platforms that are out there? Well, I think that um, um, certainly it's going to be a new bundle, um, but it does, that doesn't necessarily mean that consolidation is a great equity play. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've seen the downside of consolidation with Warner Brothers, right? Warner Brothers Discovery. So logistic, you know, theoretically it makes a lot of sense for those two businesses to be together from an operational perspective. Uh, but from the leverage you put on it to make the deal happen, um, you know, it's not a great setup into this environment. Um, so, you know, M&A can, you know, be a, a provider of value. It can also take it away. And I think the new bundles, you know, the trends seem to be, you know, the healthier business models seem to be trending towards platforms layering streaming on. So Amazon, Apple, um, that is the bundle of the future, I think, more so than something that is pure streaming. So are there any stocks that you like as we have this conversation right now, yeah. or are you steer clear and cautious going into 2023? Well, look, I mean, my, the, the stocks that I've, I'm most favorable towards are kind of adjacent to streaming. So I've liked, um, frankly, some of the sports plays. So I've liked uh, Liberty Braves, um, you know, kind of a niche play. Um, I think that uh, uh, the Formula One business um, is a good play. Live Nation, I think, is, is a real play on kind of the heightened celebrity culture. Uh, again, again, kind of so you're in that adjacent. Liberty family pretty hard. Huh? Yeah, I'm in the Liberty family. Not all of it, but much of it, I think, is well positioned. And uh, um, I think that the uh, um, within streaming, I think there's an opportunity for Disney. Um, you know, I think that their ad play, you know, unlike Netflix, are going to get a lot of people signing up for their ad tiers. They're going to have a lot of ad volume to sell. Um, so I think that will be a meaningful increment. Let, let's end on Netflix. You yeah. say, unlike Netflix, what is your sense in terms of the success so far of the ad tier there? I know the market has been responding to some other stories and yeah. data that's been out there negatively. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, look, I, I never bought into the idea that the advertising was going to be a big increment at Netflix because I didn't buy into the idea that they were putting up a, uh, an ad tier that many people would want to sign up for. I mean, what they initially announced, this basic with advertising, um, where you only get one stream, you don't get the full high def, you don't get to download it. Um, it's something that not many people are kind of want to sign up for, and I thought that that would be a disappointment relative to where people were running with the stock, and we're seeing that play out to a degree right now. Um, you know, we'll see where they take it. Could they make, you know, advertising more prominent? Yeah, but I think there's a tension there because this has been an ad-free business, an ad-free management team, um, and I think, you know, I'm not sure that they're really wedded to going all in on advertising. Unlike Disney, which has had a lot of success with Hulu and can translate that, I think, into Disney+. Barton, thanks for stopping by. Great. Thank you.